Hey, welcome to the latest day that God has made. And this is one that we will rejoice and be glad in. I'm glad you're a part of it, glad I'm a part of it. Glad that we can meet here again for just a few minutes. I wanna share another story with you. Uh, this one took place about 11 years ago. Uh, I, was, I was pastoring in a town in Northeast Ohio, a suburb of Cleveland uh, called Sheffield Lake, just a really great little town. Um, wonderful people there, just loving people in a loving church. And uh, it was located right on the shore of one of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie. And when I moved there, uh, <clears throat> Debbie stayed back in our old home because the house hadn't sold. So she kept working and stayed in that home trying to sell the house. I moved to Sheffield Lake and I rented an apartment on the ninth floor of a huge apartment building that was all concrete. The walls were concrete, the ceiling was concrete floor was concrete and, and like I said, it was nine stories tall or 11 stories tall. Uh, I was on the ninth floor and uh, I was living in a, um, a studio apartment and the northern open, the northern wall was all glass. It was a sliding glass door. And um, I, I, when I first went into it, I wondered why there was two sliding glass doors. I found out later, it's very windy, 90 feet above Lake Erie. Uh, but I'd moved into this apartment and just was loving the view. I mean, it was killer. Um, it got to it, it got to, to winter and uh, it was just ice, frozen Lake Erie as far as you could see. You couldn't see it from there, but if you could, the next stop was Canada. And so the wind would come in off of that lake and the snow would come in off of that lake. And if you're a winter freak like I am, that was the prescription for heaven. Uh, I loved and love winter. I love snow. I love to snow ski. Um, so that was, that was a really interesting place to live. And I remember one day I was, um, like I said, studio apartment, maybe 500 square feet maximum. And I was kind of just walking around, kind of lost, um, checking out my new place. All I had was a, a blow up air mattress, um, a couple of, I mean, some sheets, a couple of blankets, uh, a duffel bag full of clothes and a laptop. And that was, that was what I was living with for a while. And uh, so there wasn't a lot to do. And um, I, was, I was off and I remember walking up to the, uh, to the kitchen area, which was one wall of this studio apartment and glancing at the refrigerator. And there was one of those magnets on the side that tell you all of your emergency numbers. I've had those before, you have too. Usually it, it gives you the police and all of those things like that. And I looked at this one and uh, I just kind of paused and read it and it was like, um, in case of emergency call, um, 911. But here's your non-emergency numbers, Sheffield Lake Police Department, Sheffield Lake Fire Department, poison control. And then, I mean, those were normal, but then the next one on the list was Coast Guard. I had never had in my life a Mac on my refrigerator telling me how to get a hold of the Coast Guard if I needed them. But that really wasn't a bad idea because like I said, all there was outside of that window, nine floors down uh, off of my balcony, which was frozen over this thick with ice, all that was down there was lake. I was close enough that I actually threw a baseball off of my balcony into Lake Erie one day just to see if I could do it. <clears throat> Cost me a baseball, but I found out I could. Coast Guard. I tried to think of ways that I might need to call that number and I really couldn't come up with any. But I just decided to remember that it was there because hey, who knows? It's possible, I guess. I could see a freighter sinking off in the distance or maybe somebody on a jet ski could flip over and maybe lose their way and I could call the Coast Guard for them. I don't know. I've never had to call the Coast Guard before. Well, a few months after that, a, a family joined our church and uh, I was talking with the the husband of that family afterward, his name is Chris, really nice guy. And it turned out that he was the um, second in charge of the uh, Cleveland Harbor Coast Guard Station. Interesting. Uh, I don't think I'd ever even known anybody in the Coast Guard before coming from uh, Michigan and Illinois, mainly Illinois, a landlocked state. So I, I got to know Chris over a period of weeks and, and really began to develop a friendship and a relationship with him. And uh, I, I told him how I used to do ride-alongs with the Illinois State Police. Um, 
a friend of mine named Mike uh, was a trooper, is a trooper, and uh, got to patrol with him uh, through East St. Louis on the midnight shift. Uh, quite an experience. And he said, hey, would you like to go on a Coast Guard ride along? I said, well, what's that mean? He said, well, we have what we call fast boats and they dock in downtown Cleveland. I'll just ride out to the pier and pick you up at the pier here at your apartment building and we'll go patrol the lake all day. And then afterward, we'll go put the boat up and I'll bring you home. I said, hey, that sounds great. You know, let's do that. But Chris, you need to know one thing. I really don't swim. And he said, it's okay, Ron, we stay on top. Well, I thought, good deal, you know, I'm, I'm in. So um, we, we set up a date for it and I was kind of looking forward to it, but a little intimidated. Um, it's a big lake and I'm a little guy and I really do swim like a rock, only the rocks really swim, swim a little better than I do. Uh, well, about a week later, Chris called me and said, hey, I, if you don't mind, I, I've got permission not only for you to go on the ride along, but we wanna use you for uh, cold water rescue. I said, what, what's that mean? He said, well, we're gonna put you in a Mustang suit, a waterproof suit, seals around your face. We're gonna drop you over the side of the boat and then we're gonna rescue you. I said, Chris, you know, if, if we do this, it won't really be practice, it'll be real because you really will be rescuing me because I don't swim. He said, no problem, I, I, I gotcha. I said, well, you know, if you can't trust the United States Coast Guard, who can you trust? So I agreed that I would become their crash test dummy of sorts out there in the middle of Lake Erie. Well, it was a couple of days before um, I was to go on this ride along and uh, I, I turned on my television in the evening after getting home from work and there was my friend Chris on television, on the news. And they were interviewing him and he looked so cold. Literally, there was ice in his hair and on his eyebrows. And the lady said, so tell us what you did today. He said, well, we had to do water rescues today. We were supposed to do it tomorrow, but Sully, if you remember, set that jet down on the Hudson River in New York yesterday and so our headquarters told us we had to do water rescues today. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So the lady finally told him, well, you look really cold, go warm up. And she signed off and I waited an hour or so and I called Chris up and I said, man, what happened? He said, well, orders came down yesterday to do water rescues early and I couldn't find you. So I had to get in the Mustang suit. I said, well, you looked, you looked frozen. He said, Ron, it leaked. <laughs> All I could do was laugh. It's like, Chris, you know what? God protects those who are too dumb to protect themselves. And that's me in this case. And uh, he had to go through the experience of having the water rush down inside of the mask, into the suit, 32 degree water, and just about frozen to death. So I thought that was justice, don't you? I still kind of do. Uh, Chris was a, was a great guy, a, a good friend, but he, he, he got what he had coming. But you know what that moment did to me? I mean, it, it, it kind of, I already had a friendship with him, but it took my friendship with God to a new level. It really did. Because I'd been praying about this right along. I was a little intensely concerned about it, and God knew that. And I'm not saying that God set that plane down in the Hudson for me, but I'm saying he used it to protect somebody who wasn't smart enough to protect himself. And it took my relationship with Jesus at that, in that season to a different place. It breathed fresh air into my walk with Christ because I realized he really does have my back. Chris was prepared for this kind of event. I wasn't. I don't know what would have happened had it been this poor old guy you see looking at you right now. And that brings me to the scripture that I wanna share with you today. And it's a scripture that I want you to do what I'm doing to in this season, latch on to it. It is Philemon, the only chapter in Philemon, Philemon chapter one. And it's the last, the last part of verse 20 when it simply says, refresh my heart in Christ. Refresh my heart in Christ. 
you know, I had no idea that my agreeing to this ride along was going to refresh anything. I was doing it out of curiosity. I was doing it out of friendship with Chris. Uh, and I was doing it just because it was an opportunity to do something I'd never done before. And I liked that. I never dreamed that it would bring refreshment because I would see my God deliver me from something that he knows I need to be delivered from. Like I said, Chris was well equipped to handle it. I wasn't equipped at all. I would have been in trouble. And so I find myself praying more and more these days, hey God, refresh my heart in Christ. And I find myself especially praying now in this season where we're all locked down and trying to figure our way through and we really don't know how because we've never been here before. None of us have. In this season, I pray more and more. Refresh my heart in Christ. Use this season, God, to bring me to a new place in you, a new place of faithfulness, a new place of trust, a new place of accepting whatever you want to send my way. God, you want to drop me off the side of a boat into freezing waters in Lake Erie? Okay. I'm in, I'll do it, but I'll do it knowing you got my back. He has your back today. You may not see him, you may not feel him. Oh, but friend, he's there. If you've trusted him as your king, he's there. And he'll never turn away from you. Even though you may fail him, he will never fail you. I hope that this season is teaching you that that's true that he's walking with you. I hope that you're meeting with him every day in these videos, in your private time alone with God, just quietly talking with him and resting and relaxing in him. I hope you're being obedient to him in calling your friends to a new awareness of God in their lives. I hope that you're inviting them to opportunities to hear about the goodness of God through your church, through online services and things like that. And maybe just plain old through a phone call or a FaceTime with you where you get up the courage under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to talk to your friend about Jesus. You've got it in you to do that. Let this be a time of refreshment for you. Not a time of fear, not a time of anxiety, a time of refreshment where God breathes a new spirit of joy and of peace into you. You're gonna be back out in the world soon enough. For now, rest in the arms of Jesus. Let him refresh you. Get to the point where you can say, you wanna drop me out of a boat? Drop me out of a boat. I know you've got me and I'm not gonna worry. It's a great place to live your life, guys. Let's do that, shall we? Father, I pray for my friends today. I pray that you'll move all of us to a place where we're willing to let you do whatever you want to do in our lives because we know you've got us. We know that you are our mighty, strong tower that we can run to and find safety in. And Father, we run to you today in this crazy time that we're in. We run to you today. We hide under the wing of our God, knowing that you've got us. Thank you so much for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for your refreshment today, guys. You have a good one. We'll talk again tomorrow.